Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial slash breakdown of a build. Um, today we're taking a look at sugarcane farms. Um, if you've been uh, up to date with the old Minecraft scene, which I'm assuming you have at this point, um, the zero take sugarcane farms and cactus farms and all those kind of things have now been removed from the game, which leaves us with a need for lots of sugarcane. So what you see behind me is a sugarcane farm that is stackable, it is modular, and uh, can be built pretty much anywhere that you like. Um, in this scenario, I'm going to show you how to build a single slice of these. If you're familiar with the um, Minecraft community, again, you may have seen a similar uh, design from Il Mango. However, it's more the use of the uh, slime blocks in this case, which is the kind of technology from Il Mango. The remainder of it really is just uh, a change of how you're harvesting the crops. So let's, um, instead of taking a look at the, the main farm behind me for now, we're going to do a little switch and go for the uh, single s uh, slither of one, and then I will run you through how to build it. Guys, before we get started on the video, um, can I ask that if you do end up enjoying the video, you do leave a like and maybe consider subscribing, and also maybe consider checking out some of my other tutorials or even my um, Let's Play. It's filled with redstone contraptions just like this, um, so if you enjoy it, I'm sure you'll enjoy that too. But back to the video. So uh, what you see in front of me here is one slice of the uh, sugarcane farm that you see over there. Um, again, this is stackable, so you can actually build this uh, pretty much to build height if you wanted to. Um, I, there may be one problem that I see with doing that, but again, I actually don't even think that would be a problem, and I'll, I'll run through that in a second. Um, in fact, let me run through it now before I do forget. <laughs> um, the reason why I think it's going to be stackable is because once you get to a certain height, once the sugarcane flies off, I don't know if on its downward momentum, it does sway backwards at any point. From what I can see from one this height, it hasn't done so. So I don't think it will be an issue. Uh, but just a heads up in case you do try and build it really high. I've actually built this about twice the size before in testing and it didn't seem to have the problem. Uh, the main reason being is that you can see here the... Um, momentum of the sugarcane is stopped immediately by the glass which means it just kind of falls flat over here one more thing i did actually forget to mention was that this is by uh the test that i've done it is a little bit hard to tell um but i will go by saying that it is 100 percent efficient and you do have my shady j guarantee on that one so this is completely lossless um i haven't seen any cases of bamboo hanging around here and again the main reason for that is the slime block pushes the momentum that it creates when it knocks it off the bottom piece of sugarcane is uh, so immense that if I didn't have this glass piece here, um, it would probably fly straight off the sides. In fact, even the bottom slice has, I think, would fly about to, to about here. So you never have any instances where the sugarcane is stuck on the side here, um, which is a great bonus, to be honest with you. When you're, sh when you're harvesting sugarcane, um, considering the rate that it grows, you're going to need the most that you can get out of it. So bringing it back to this little piece here, Essentially, what you've got down here is a uh, an etho hopper clock uh, filled with uh, having an entire hopper full with items. And just to give it some more time, we've got a um, I forget the name of of these. Um, uh, I think it's a T flip flop. I, I think it is a T flip flop. So what it does is that even when um, when this comes back in the uh, observer will pulse and will send off the signal to harvest the crop but when it's pushed back out again that gives it another round of the hopper clock because you can't you needed to make it a little bit longer this gives it twice the item amount to uh, harvest the crops um, before I turn it on though I do want to just show you over here what um, what it kind of takes to build okay so item wise there's not really much you're using the uh, the etho hopper clock is probably the most expensive part of the whole build um, I'm not going to run too much into detail about how you build one of these. If you haven't seen one, just give it a Google. Um, it does come up with, with many tutorials individually. Um, but in this scenario, um, I'm not going to go through it. Um, and the same goes for this thing as well. Once you build the Aether Hopper Clock, just stick a sticky piston on uh, any side and make sure the red point of the uh, observer is facing into the note block no matter where you face it. Um, in fact, this doesn't even need to be over here anywhere. This can be somewhere in the center and then you can run a redstone line all the way up to the note block and have it run through there but continuing on to the build essentially all you want to do is lay down some sand block in fact let me let's let's build a slice together so i can show you so when i did say it was modular and uh can be built in slices you could build one of these by itself and then just run the ether hopper clock and have that going um in my opinion that is not advisable for the reason that you're already paying for the most expensive components in this redstone build. So adding on these additional four units over here, they're pretty much free. They don't cost much. You just need some sand, some extra slime blocks, 
uh, a couple extra sticky pistons I think would be your most expensive thing um, and then uh, an another few comparators so let's start off building this um, piece over here now I'm going to start off with some sand I'm just using red because it looks cool you don't need to do that at all um, and then you just want to get a, a set of stairs any stairs will do fine and then you want to curve it around now for anyone who's not aware of stairs because I actually wasn't aware of this up until recently and how I used to get the the curving of the stairs wrong you want to start on the edge one over here facing outwards and then you want to just align that with the edge over there to get it to turn and then you want to link it all the way up Ugh, I really hate stairs and um, you just want to link it all the way up to this piece here and then you've created your um the final for the water so what you do want to do then is get some water if you understand sugarcane farms this is all going to be pretty blah blah for you but just bear with me because it's easier if I go through all of it with you. Um, the next thing you're going to need to do is place like an immovable block um, or a non-sticky block. Uh, in this case, I'm going for leaves because number one, they're cheap. And depending on where you put them, they probably look the, the best. You can use, um, I've used some, uh, what do you call it, glazed terracotta over there. Um, but you, you don't need to use that. Um, I'm just going to go with uh, leaf blocks with this for now. And the next thing you want to do is from the center, come up from where the observer is and put three blocks and then you're going to want a temporary block to get your sticky piston on and then you're going to want to put a slime block in the center and go out four and that's four on each side and as long as you're leaving the gap of three blocks and then the sticky piston on each side that should give you enough so when you put you can put nine slime blocks on each one um, another quick advantage whilst I'm already at this part of the, uh, the build you can actually make this smaller if you want so if you wanted to you could do this instead uh, and build this like this you could push this further back so you don't need to have them further away and make like really skinny towers um, but again when you're using if you're looking for efficiency this would probably be the most ideal in fact you could actually go one bigger than this as well and go for 11 one on each side but i found that this was probably the, the best size um once you've done this all you need to do is wire it up to this system here you can put a repeater and you're pretty much done now if i turn this on you'll get the first harvest and as you just saw there the um the pieces of sugarcane that were on there just went flying off the edge um that's kind of the reason why this thing is 100 percent lossless and it does that every single time from what i've seen um I've never had a piece that's been stuck in, in the bamboo over here. So as long as you put a barrier, give it one bit of space there and put a barrier up over here, just like I have done with the glass over there, um, you should not have any problems with that. And then just put a water collection system, any water collection system will do. You can see I went pretty rough and tough with this one over here. I just put a bucket of water in each corner and then I've set that up to individual uh, sugarcane chests over here. To be honest with you, what you should probably do is figure out a slightly more efficient way to get them all into one collection area um you could use a chain of hoppers to put them all into one chest but that doesn't really matter so um i've also made another design which is not so technically redstoneless so this is this should be a little bit more lag efficient if you're on a server um i don't really know the implications of having used redstone on a server before i only ever use it in my single player world i don't think it's enough to create too much lag on a single player world however um in this world if you are going to make them really high and you're going to make a few of them at a time then maybe using this version here if you've got a lot of redstone resources this is probably going to be a better one for you the only reason it's not 100% redstone is obviously it's because of the ether hopper clock although i believe there are clocks that you can make without any redstone but i'll leave that for you to do I i'm not going to get into the details of that okay so i think i've told you everything that you need to know about this this does need to have its height restricted so you're only going to get uh one a singular block harvest of the sugar cane at a time uh the reason for this is that when you do start building this higher and you decide to harvest it from here this block does eventually end up falling on here so it does not become lossless and to be honest with you it doesn't really work out the same way it does right now um the reason why this becomes so easily stackable is because of the chain of observers and note blocks so let's go back to the bigger one over here so we can see what stacking it looks like okay so you obviously just seen that we've just had a harvest done um i want to see actually if i can just quickly have a look to show you there is no sugarcane left behind on any of these roots um 
not on any block do you see a single piece of sugarcane hanging on again it's because of the momentum caused by the slime block pushes um which makes it 100 percent efficient although some of these are grown really fast after <laughs> after the harvest um so yeah you can see here 100 percent lossless but this is how you would basically tile it this is what makes it so easily tileable um, let me just go back into creative so you can see here essentially the the pattern is slime block observer slime block observer depending on where you're at in your game and how you view redstone resources like if you play how i play in my survival world for example i tend to focus quite a lot on on automation so redstone is something i readily have available in fact you will see in my survival world that i do have a um quad witch farm to take care of all my redstone needs so for someone like me or even someone who just has a uh, very other little need for redstone otherwise when you go mining and stuff if you keep enough of it up this shouldn't be too expensive or hard for you to build but i think i've run through pretty much everything that i needed to on the system here um i am going to leave a world download in the description so if you do want to have uh just a bit more of a peek if i forgot to ask any answer any questions for you you can check on the world download otherwise you're welcome to leave a comment in the comment section down below and i'll be happy to answer it for you um, my channel's not so big anyway so i usually answer pretty quick uh, so feel free to do that but otherwise i hope you enjoyed this video um please do like please do subscribe um and i'll see you next time Bye bye